Hi, everybody, and uh, all the listeners at Estereophonica, and thank you for listening to uh, Hello, Can You Go? And thank you uh, um, for playing it, also. <laughs> mm -hmm. Gracias. una gran invitada, cantante y compositora estadounidense. Ella es LP, pues que lleva cerca ya pues, de dos décadas en la industria musical, eh, componiendo pues para ella, para otros artistas, eh, como Cristina Aguilera, los Bastard Boys también, eh, Rihanna también podríamos hablar. Y bueno, hablemos sobre el lanzamiento de este segundo sencillo, How Long Can You, eh, can you Go?, este es sencillo, digamos que es esa continuación de eh, The One That You Love, el sencillo pues ya está disponible en todas las plataformas digitales. Bienvenida, LP, a Estereofónica. Ok. Porque bueno. LP, um, yeah. Jenny, you hear me? Ok, the first question uh, yeah, is... Yeah, I do now, but I didn't, like, after she said all that stuff, I didn't hear anything, <laughs> sorry. Ok, so we are going to go question by question, ok? Ok. So, your, your your new song and your new album. Yeah. Uh, yes. What is it about? <laughs> we know we have some information that uh, you also related with uh, Dia de los Muertos, and we want to know what is it about. Um. Well, uh, you know, I mean, I think it's like Dia de los Muertos was just like a, a bit of a um, a nod toward the um, you know. Uh, just playing with fire as far as like, you know, like be, when you're out and you're, um, you know, having like, to me anyway, when you're having these like late night kind of like uh, shenanigans, sometimes I get very like, kind of like, oh, wow, you know, if you go down this road too far, you could go all the way down that road, you know, um, uh, which plays into like, just, you know, experiences of mine, you know, I even have um, a friend that, um, did go down the absolute worst road um and and paid for it with their lives you know a few a few different friends so um you yeah. know it's it's just about um kind of always being kind of aware of of that things could go get worse you know if, if you're not careful you have to like you know keep yourself keep yourself in the right lane sometimes en fin, este yeah. es video eh, grabado durante la pandemia, mm -hmm. por supuesto con todas las precauciones tomadas durante esta grabación. ¿Cómo fue mm -hmm. esta experiencia teniendo, teniendo en cuenta, digamos, la situación actual que estamos viviendo actual, eh, en este momento? Ok, we know that this video was recorded in this uh, pandemic situation we all are mm -hmm. we living and uh, mm -hmm knowing that you have all uh, all taking care of all situations but how was the experience to to make a video with all this situation with the lockdown and and all that stuff i mean i mean one of the biggest pain in the asses about making a video right now is that you have to spend all this money to get everybody tested <laughs> you know that's uh i think that's one of the hardest things you know it's like like having to like put that in the budget is just like so extra you know it's like it, it really digs into the <laughs> into the budget a bit so um there's that um and you know you have to you know like use a smaller crew and cast and everything um and um but you know i feel like for the most part i've worked with great people who have um just been so professional and um, it's kind of gone off without a hitch, you know, as far as like, you know, everyone's got masks on and uh, all the things. So I feel like we um, were able to like get around it. And uh, I think both these videos, the one that you love and how low can you go? I feel like hold up even in non pandemic times. So I'm happy about that. Claro, claro que sí. Además que la música de LP es muy genial, ¿no? Tanto así que también ha sonado en varias series. LP, ¿cómo se siente esto? Ok, LP, knowing that your music, uh, your amazing music goes to uh, everybody, uh, you have the power to, to let your music get deep into your heart. And also, your music is not only playable, play it on, on radio or Spotify or the platforms. Now we know that we see that uh, LP music 
is getting into serious uh, TV show, uh, Netflix series. <laughs> How do you feel about it? Uh, I mean, always great. I, I mean, you know, um, anytime you could go like like cross mediums, you know, it's really cool to um, you know to have your have your song in a in a a, a movie or a TV show. You know, um, it just goes to show you. Uh, it's it's kind of like how they talk about uh, a song changes. Like everyone has a different reason for liking a song. A lot of times, you know, like um, Dave Grohl, you know, has said about how like you know when you're singing a song and there's 20 thousand you know um different um versions of it like it's being sung back to you like these people it means something different to them so i feel like that's like with a with a show uh a song going in a show it feels like that it's like all of a sudden the the it's like a part of this narrative this new story and um i love that i mean it's very it's very cool very flattering very inspiring i think you know to like have uh you know to have a different uh, perception of like what that song means. Claro, creo que si además se alimenta y alimenta como esta canción Lost on You, que es un hit mundial, una canción con mucho sentimiento, que de hecho superó recientemente los eh, 2000 millones de reproducciones, también ha sido el número uno en 18 países y alcanzó el número uno en casi todos los analistas internacionales. LP, ¿en algún momento se imaginó que esta canción iba a ser tan exitosa? Ok, LP, going back to Lost on You and the amazing numbers that the song has reached, uh, passing through the 200 million streamings and being uh, number one in more than 18 countries. I think that every country that had a pop radio station had this song at number one. How do you feel about it? <laughs> uh, it's amazing, you know, it, it's it's just, uh, it's astonishing that like, you know, you could, um, I just, I remember like, you know, writing just the title um, in my phone uh, that I wanted to talk about, um, you know, and like kind of conceptualizing what I want to talk about in the song, you know, and, and it, you know, came out of a, a difficult situation with a ex lover and all that stuff, you know, and, and then I was played it for my label I was on at the time and I was dropped <laughs> after they heard it. So that the whole, the whole idea of that song, that song's own journey, you know, as far as like the world is like insane. And, uh, it's just, um, you know, it's why I got into this because um, I just think that like, you just never know what's going to happen in, in life in, in general. And so I always like, you know, and I, I tell the story so many times about, you know, playing that song for my old label and, and then like not thinking anything of it and dropping me and then signing to a little new label and uh, that song taking off. Cause I want people to be inspired that, you know, just because some, fucking dick in a suit on the other side of a desk <laughs> says I don't like the song that uh, that doesn't mean it you know it can't come back and be um, a hit and and make a lot of people very happy and uh, you know so like keep writing songs keep keep and you know not just writing songs keep being you keep doing your thing keep uh, putting um, everything you got out there in the world and and let it do its thing and and don't let you know anyone else tell you that you can't do something or something like that, right? Nice <laughs> you know, you didn't make you didn't make the face. You didn't make the all right. You gotta go like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, I don't. No. Tell you. There you go. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Feels good, doesn't it? That's fine. <laughs> anyway. Bueno, sí, es definitivamente una canción muy pero muy poderosa. Pero también hay algo muy poderoso en la vida de LP y es el ukelele. ¿Cómo funciona esa relación del ukelele con LP? Ok, LP, there is yeah. another powerful thing in your life that is the ukelele, that instrument <laughs> that you play. It is very powerful. <laughs> It's like me, small but powerful. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's, that's the question. How is that relation between <laughs> LP and the ukulele? Well, you know, I like all things in my life to be small so I look bigger. <laughs> That's the main goal. <laughs> um, but I, I think I, you know, the ukulele just um, 
the, the ukulele is a symbol for me because I started playing the ukulele um, when I was just writing for other people. And I really, I truly did not think that my, um, my career as an artist where I was going to sing the songs was going to come back like to me, you know, um, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't know. I just was like, I was just happy to be writing songs, you know, um, and making, you know, m making my living from music. I was just like, Oh, thank you. You know? Um, and I started playing the ukulele just for fun. You know, what a concept. Cause you know, when you make, when you make a passion or something, you love a job, you know, it's, it's dangerous. It's like something, you know, it's like kind of like how you love playing sports when you're a kid, but then when you grow up and you, you need to do um, sports to stay fit, you're just like, sucks, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but like, but it, you know, music can get like that if you're not careful. And I feel like the ukulele just reminded me of the joy of, um, of just sitting down and making music just for the fun of it for myself, which is why I started doing this. Um, and, and then it all kind of came back to me like that, that playing that instrument kind of brought me whistling, like, cause I always whistled and I brought that into my music and then it just brought this, these like songs into existence, like, like that were only like for me, you know, like when I wrote, uh, into the wild, I wasn't even on a label. I wasn't even, I didn't even know I was going to start that go going back to being an artist. So, um, it was like a very kind of like weird time, but when I wrote into the wild, it wasn't like, I was like, I'm not, you know, giving this to anyone. This is my song. It's like, it was like, I just started writing songs that like, I just couldn't really give to anyone or like picture giving to someone. It was such an artist kind of like song. And, um, and so, yeah, so the ukulele is a symbol for new beginnings and for um, rediscovering uh, joy um, for me. Genial. Genial. Bueno, está, hablamos, hablamos de, digamos, de estos lanzamientos, de todo eso que, que Eufy ha hecho en el 2020, o que hizo en el 2020, pero también hay algo eh, que tenía previsto, ¿no? Que definitivamente pues, eh, se pospuso por el COVID-19, fue esa gran gira eh, mundial, ¿no? Que al final, pues se hizo, ¿no? Pero se hizo virtual. Eh, se transmitió en vivo desde los estudios de The Hype en Los Ángeles en agosto. Podríamos decir que, bueno, fue un evento sin precedentes. En fin, ¿cómo fue esta experiencia y en qué momento pues, decidió hacer una gira virtual? Ok, LP, uh, several releases you had in 2020. Mm -hmm. And well, that amazing moment that you, you had a, a, a concert a virtual show from Los Angeles that, that you had in, in August. How was that experience? How was the experience to have a virtual release? How you felt about it? Uh, uh, to have a what? The, the virtual release, the virtual concert, the virtual activity. Oh, in, the virtual, in August, sorry, sorry, sorry. From, um, in, in August that you had. It was cool, you know? I mean, it's a, it's a little like, you know, it's a little hard, you know, like, like singing singing like so hard and then like, you know, t and then there's silence, <laughs> you know, but I just, I could psychically feel people um, out there, you know, and like, um, I was happy, I was happy to be there, you know, um, cause I miss everybody very much, you know, and, uh, and I know they miss each other, they miss me and whatever. And, um, you know, it felt good to um, connect even uh, virtually with everybody, you know, it's not, Clearly, it's not the preferred connection, but um, in you know, in absence of anything else, I think it was it was great, and and uh, and I was I was really happy with it, you know. Bueno, sé que estamos cortos de, de tiempo, eh, pero quiero preguntarle a Opi cómo ha vivido estos momentos de pandemia y qué vendrá para este año. Okay, Opi. We know, we know that we are uh, short of time. This is the last question. And well, the last question is how uh, you feel about this very particular situation in, in lockdown and what what you expect for 2021, wh what's coming? Um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know what to say about the lockdown. I mean, I think uh, ultimately it'll be, you know, uh, something that um, I think depending on how you handle it, um, will be, you know, uh, we, I think, you know, when I, when I think back to sometimes like, you know, we were just talking about lost and when I think back to the, 
you know, when I wrote that song, the year I wrote that song in 2014, and I remember thinking to myself, like, God, like for for a while, for maybe like a year and a half until all this all this uh, cool stuff happened with that song, you know, I was thinking that 2014 was like one of the worst years ever because I, you know, my my relationship went down the tubes. My um my um career was like kind of got like shut down a little bit. Like um you know, I knew I knew that they were going to like really push my record. I had all new people at the label that didn't believe in me after having everybody believing in me. And so I felt like, you know, life had kind of fallen apart in 2014. But then, you know, a year and a half later, um, or uh, or maybe a little more, but um, about that, everything switched around. And it was like suddenly the best time, of, like a boom time in my life. I had a you know, new relationship. My, uh, my song was, char- you know, going to number one in all these countries. And uh, so I thought like that, you know, that song actually, I wrote that song during this terrible year. And it was a, a song, a few songs that changed my life. So um, I think that this is that, that kind of time. It's like fertile ground to, um, you know, to um, make adjustments or, or to like create things that are going to, um, you know, yield crops in the future. You know, like uh, it's like time to um, time to like plant the seeds that grow into something. Um, and I feel like for me, um, I think this year has been this past year and this year is like I've gotten to really be hands on with like the songs that are getting on this record. And um, then there's many songs that would never have even maybe even been written if um, if it wasn't home. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always uh, I think, um, you know, I think the whole idea of being grateful for what you have right now is it's always like kind of you know, in my mind. And I feel like that's like, that's the, the way, but um, I think that, you know, I think that things will get off to a slow start. I'm, I'm hoping that in the fall, you know, things will start to gravitate toward, you know, some of the things we used to see. And then I think, uh, you know, I think, um, I think there's a lot of good stuff coming is what I think. <laughs> there you go. And on a positive note, <laughs> we're good. Okay, bueno. Yeah, I too much coffee. Yeah, so that's what it is. <laughs> you missed the part yeah. about the, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Gracias a ti por acompañarnos en Estereofónica. Okay, Yopi, thank friends. you for being with us in Estereofónica. <laughs> thank uh, you so much. Muchas gracias.